back here in our studio at Engine Performance Expo. Taking a street engine and making it a high performance engine, there's definitely going to be some considerations that have to be taken. And I'm very excited to have Lake Speed Jr. at a ring grinder. He's Mr. Total Seal. My goodness, we get to see you in your genuine element. Exactly, sir. So it was cool to see Jimmy Barton talk about those little nuances between a street motor and what happens when you take it and make it a race motor and obviously cooling is a consideration they talked about at length and having the right tools to do the job okay here's another tool to do the job so ring in gaps and this is a question that i know keith and kevin and bobby and everybody gets out of the tech line of total seal all the time Every day. what should my ring in gaps be so we're going to go down that road a little bit and let's talk about conceptually about ring in gaps for a little bit and then we'll actually go through a little demo we're going to show you we're actually going to uh, set the end gaps on this gas ported piston ring so a little fancy high-tech piece yes yeah you know so we'll, we'll go through that we got all our tools here we got our feeler gauge we got we, we know it's not a ring it's a ring compressor we don't have the block back here so we're gonna do a little hollywood magic and we're just gonna use the ring compressor <laughs> as our gauge so we can go uh, take some uh, end gap off and put it back in and measure it and go through that. But the whole reason is why do we have ring end gap? Why do we have ring end gap, Lee? So the one reason is you have to have ring end gap to be able to install it on the piston. That would be kind of a neat thing you need to be able to do. Yes. Now, once you get it installed on the piston, the idea is that ring end gap needs to be able to compensate for the growth in the ring with temperature. We had Pat and Musi on earlier, and what was he saying? Was if you could take the cylinder heads off right at the end of the run. Glowing red. Right. So what happens to metal when it gets hot? It expands. Exactly. Even I know this stuff, folks. <laughs> so the more cylinder pressure you run, the more power you're making, the more heat that's going into the ring. Therefore, you need a larger end gap. So, of course, we don't have to do all the mental gymnastics. Our buddy Randy Neal gave us that term the other day. Uh, at Total Seal, we actually have a complete listing of recommended end gaps based on the application. For example, like Pat's application, you're running nitrous. Big power, big heat, bigger end gap. So that top end top ring needs a bigger end gap because it's going to see the bulk of the heat. So the idea of that is you need that bigger gap so that it doesn't butt. Because what happens is if your rings butt, bad things happen. Because now it's trying to expand. It can cause increased cylinder wear. It can do lots of damage to your engine. So you don't want that. So and, and nitrous is an interesting uh, topic of conversation in regards to end gap because you know, a normally aspirated engine is only gonna be able to develop so much heat with just an air fuel mixture. But when you add nitrous, now you've got this accelerant that's gonna drive that temperature up. But you're not always running the nitrous with full hit sure. going to the bottle. So what happens is you have to set that end gap for your worst case scenario, the most amount of nitrous you're running, which means that every moment you're running that engine without that, you have a bigger end gap. And you're like, well, why does that matter? Well, back to Mr. Hydrocarbon guy, yeah. this is called blow-by. Blow-by allows the combustion gases that would normally be driving the piston to make power to escape past the piston. That's a lack of efficiency. So ideally, you want your end gaps, when the engine's running, to be almost zero, is where you want to be. That's kind of hard to figure, which is why Joe Moriarty years ago invented the total seal piston ring, which back then was the only thing we had with a gapless ring. And the idea of the gapless ring is it overlaps. It was two overlapping rings that closed that gap. It would allow you to have that big end gap for that max cylinder pressure, max temperature, but then at normal driving conditions, at lower temperatures, you still didn't have that increased blow by. So it could compensate. Now, that's the idea of a gapless ring is, as you have talked to Keith on the show, Many hidden times. horsepower, you know, it's, there's applications for that. Now, this particular ring I'm holding is basically uh, a NASCAR type ring that's a gas ported ring. And Which it's teeny tiny. It, it's small. There's yeah. not a lot going <laughs> on there. But it's a seal. I mean, you gotta think about it. We were talking about the piston the other day with Jimmy Barton, and he said, no, the wrist pin is the backbone of the piston. It's the structural component. Piston rings are not a structural component of the piston. It's a seal. 
you wouldn't think about putting an iron gasket between your head and your block because it can't move around. This needs to be able to flex, right? Gaskets are soft. They're, they're designed to conform. Rings are designed to conform, which is one reason why Total Seal invented the total conform ring. It's got these little radial notches in the back that allow the ring to conform. Back to the gas ported ring, it can conform to the distortion of the piston because that piston isn't completely strong out there on the edges. Like Jimmy said, you moved the, the wrist pin in, but now the outside edges can move. So the gas ports in the ring are doing a couple of things. Not only allowing the gas pressure to get behind the ring to increase ring seal, it's also allowing the ring to move and seal against the bottom of the groove, which is also a big area of ring sealing. But back to the beginning topic, ring end gap. We know we want to have the correct gap for that top ring and the second ring. And there's some theory about second ring end gap. And let's address that real quick. Some guys say the old school way of doing it was you set the same end gap for the top ring and the bottom ring, knowing the top ring is going to be hotter. So it's going to grow more. So there's a second gap that will actually in operation be wider that would allow that any, ring, any gas is trapped between the top ring and the second ring to escape. Now, what's happening in the modern low tension rings when you're getting to a, say, a three millimeter or a two millimeter style oil ring, what we're seeing is they actually like having a little bit wider second end gap when you have lower ring tension to use that blow by to help evacuate the oil from the oil ring because that oil ring when it gets small has less tension than say a 3 16th ring so there's some people that have done that we won't get into all the details right now maybe another time another video we get some maybe i like brad peters if you're watching brad i want you on here we can talk about this buddy yeah, this it, isn't the last one of these no so. so anyway so let's talk about how you set the gap so once you've got the idea of what gap you want the power ring filer is going to get the job done for you and hey my boss Matt Hartford, the guys at Total Seal, they made this super easy. Even somebody like me can do it. So what you do is you put the ring on the ring in, ring filer. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna hold the ring in position with this. That's gonna be the clamp. But you wanna set the right radius because you don't wanna cut it crooked. So what you're gonna do is we're gonna put the ring down here like this. We're gonna move the ring and set it against the, uh, square it against the, uh, the grinding wheel. Now this little device out here is going to be able to adjust out and give us the radius. Now we're only doing one ring. The nice thing about this is once the radius is set, you can run through eight rings, boom, boom, or four rings or however many, back to back to back. So we're going to set this right here. So now it's clamped down. We know it's locked in. This is locked in. We're all good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set our dial indicator to zero. So now we know we're beginning at zero. And in this case, we pre-measured it. There was 22 thousandths in gap. We want to take it out. Say we want to take it out to say 30 thousandths in gap, all right? So what we're going to do is now we're going to turn on the ring filer. We set it to zero. Now we're just going to begin to move and grind it in. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. Now I'll back up here just for a second. Some guys like using this as the chop method, right? And you can do that with a bigger ring. But because this is a tiny itty bitty ring, you don't want to bend that ring because it's pretty thin. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start it down here and we're gonna roll it back this way. And I'm just holding that table down, dialing it in. And I was at 22, so I'm gonna take 8,000 off the dial indicator. And when I put it back in the ring compressor, simulating our bore, that should give us right at 30,000. And I'm just going real slow, letting it creep up on it, because again, this is a thin ring, and you don't want to hurt your ring. You don't want to bend it. It needs to be square and level and flat. So there we go, right at 8,000. Turn that off, bring it up. Now the deburring wheel over here, we can use that to deburr it, because we're just Moving along for time here, I'm not, I'm going to skip that step. But now we've opened that gap up. We're going to set it here in our ring compressor. Again, I know I don't have a squaring tool. I know how wrong I'm doing this. So just know that. Um, We're on TV. Yeah. So I made some marks to set it in here. 
closest I'm going to get it. It was 22. Oh, it's a whole lot more than that now. So let's get out our 30 thousandths feeler gauge. Roll her over to it. Now I can drop it right in. Boom. Done. It's that simple. So with the right tools to do the job, you can rip through this and it's way better than that hand grinder. Oh my goodness, and I still see those every now and again in use, guys, uh, cranking them out. Oh, yeah. But if you have an opportunity like this, and it's a uh, great machine, and this is available at Total Seal, obviously we gotta deburr that before we leave the set today. Oh, we're not, yeah. we would never ever put what we just did in an engine, just know that. Yeah. <laughs> but this is, for demonstration purposes, only. Well, I, I think it is great and it's just another example. We've learned a lot over the course of the week about different tools that have made jobs more efficient and easier. And here's one. If you're spending a lot of time doing this, you can get them all the same. You get uniformity, you have efficiency, and isn't that what it's all about? You save oh, time. Exactly. And the whole the idea is we want to have you know, efficiency throughout the whole engine and efficiency in the time it takes to build the engine. So having the time, a, a tool that saves you time, now you're not just worried about your top end gap and your second end gap, you can actually deal on your oil ring end gap because that's part of, for a vacuum engine, that's pull, a dry sump engine that's pulling vacuum or even a wet sump motor that's got a vacuum pump, you can actually gain some power and get better blow by by dialing around your in gaps on the oil rails on the oil ring. So a little, you know, hidden horsepower there, but you gotta look into it. So this makes that job easier because if anyone's ever tried to grind an oil ring, this hard steel, you know you don't want to do it with that grinder. This thing makes the job a lot easier. Oh, excellent work and I appreciate it. And obviously uh, this is something you can find more information about at the Total Seal website. They sell them as you can imagine. And of course the end gap, the recommended end cap is uh, available on the web as well, right? Yes, all the recommendations are right there on the website. Excellent. Now. What a day, what a day, what a day. My, yeah, my, brain, my brain is swollen, I've learned so much today. They told us, don't start cars, we are not gonna listen.